The Day I Found a Death Note Chapter 1 Hello, welcome to my miserable life. My name is Sarah Minamoto. In the time on which my story is taking place, I was 17 years old, almost 18. I lived in Kanto in Japan. I was tall, with dark long hair, usually wrapped up in a braid, dark chocolate eyes, and a face decorated with fre a few freckles. My physical constitution was normal, even though I worked out a lot. I lived in an apartment with only my father as a company. I was an only child, and my mother died years ago. I remember our relationship as being a bit peaceful. He cared for me, despite the fact that I had certain habits. Yes, I had some habits any loving parent would hate, among which is the fact that I smoked a lot. Personally, I don't consider smoking as being a bad habit. At least to me, it was like a calming pill at the time. Something that made me forget of my pitiful existence for moments. Sometimes I wondered if I would ever be of some use to the world. I remember that most times, I felt like I was an empty milk bottle on the fridge. I didn't have many close friends, and my high school life was nothing but studying. I wanted to go to a decent university as fast as I could. The truth was that I was sick and tired of everything around me. Always the same people, always the same lame environment, it never changed no matter how hard I wished. I hated myself and my life. That's the truth. Sitting in English class, I looked out the window, almost like expecting some miracle to fall from the sky. I like English to tell the truth. Oh, how I long to live my life, maybe on America, the land of opportunities and where all prosperity comes from. But it was usually the kind of class where I sometimes persuaded the teacher to let me go out for a little while to let me have a smoke in the grounds. Yes, I had that kind of nerve. When I was bored in class, I usually wondered what it would be like if I was somebody else. I was a person looking for something with meaning in my life. Deep inside of me, I screamed and yelled, and yet nobody noticed me. Except for... Yagami-kun! Called the teacher, breaking away my thoughts. You listening? The boy in front of me looked ahead. Would you like to translate this last part? He asked. The boy stood up. The rules of God must be followed. If you do that, the sea will remain calm, and the storm won't come. Exactly like I would have answered. Very well, as expected from you. Congratulated the teacher, and the boy sat down again. I looked at him and smiled a bit to myself. That boy was the only reason I wasn't top in my class. I ended up always second because of him. But he was just perfect. Perhaps too much perfect. Light Yagami. He was the main reason why I wasn't so lonely at Daikoku Academy. And he was the strongest and perhaps only crush I've ever had in my 17 years of existence. I don't know how I began to like him, but ever since I started hanging with him, I felt a little better with myself because a boy actually accepted me for who I am. He was my friend and one of the few persons with whom I got to have a conversation with some sense. I could talk with him for hours and hours. He was so different from the other guys in school. More mature, more brighter and handsome. He wasn't all sweet though. There were times when he would be calm yet angered. When he was in that sort of mood, his words were cold and that was easily felt by the person he talked to. But the main reason why we got along so well may be because we had the same way of thinking. Ah! At last the school bell rang. Stan, bow, te amatashita. And once I was up, I started to pack my stuff in my bag very quickly. I got out of the room and walked alone to the school entrance. I didn't have any girlfriends on that shit of a school. All of them were snobs and they usually try to have that sort of conversation on which they say I should see a psychologist, that I should see a dermatologist, buy some women's clothing. In short, they had futile conversations that I wished to avoid. It was three o'clock. 
We only had that class on the afternoon, now we were actually free. On our last year of high school, our schedule was actually very soft on us. Perhaps because on that year, we needed all the time we could to study. I lighted up a cigar, and once again I was forgetting about my problems for a little while, when suddenly, I felt a hand on my shoulder. Must you really insist on that habit, Sarah-chan? Asked Yagami with a concerned voice. I turned to him and smiled. Must you worry so much, Yagami-kun? I asked with a joking tone. Yes, I must. He replied still serious. And please, you can call me light. You know me well enough for that. <laughs> We're all going to die one day, so what the heck? Like kun I said, voicing on the kun He rolled his eyes, but not taking me serious at all. All right, then have it your way. He sighed, walking past me. You know I always do, I said, keeping up with him and blowing a puff of smoke from out of my mouth. We started to hang out a lot ever since the 12th grade be started. We began to talk when the 11th grade was ending. Then we switched contacts and talked more. When the school year had begun, we were inseparable. One may assume we were together, but I doubted he would ever look at someone like me. He had tons of girls after him, even though he didn't look like it, but he usually rejected them. I wondered if that was one of the reasons why I was so hated by the snobs in my class. When we were downtown, I dropped the cigar on the floor on purpose and stepped on it. Then I smiled to him again. Just this once, I'll actually take your concerns seriously, I said immediately, having a peppermint chewing gum I had in my bag. He smiled. It's only for your own good. Your lungs will last longer. Besides, the smell annoys me. Oh, you! I said, pushing him. But not so hard, though. We kept walking side by side. It wasn't hard at all to start a conversation with him. Quite an answer you gave today in English class, huh? I said, breaking the silence. It wasn't nothing amazing. Besides, everybody knows English nowadays. He replied. Oh, but you talk so perfectly, like you were actually born in England or America. I exclaimed with honesty. You also talk perfectly uh, yourself. You have a bit of American type of accent when you talk. Yeah, sometimes I wonder what it would be like if I was born out there. I replied again, thinking of all the dreams I had at that time. We entered the cafe where we used to hang out around, sometimes after school, mostly to study and talk most of the times, of course. We sat in our typical place, our seats facing each other. He asked for a Sunday while I asked for a hot chocolate. Say, Sarah-chan. Call light out. I looked at him curiously. What? You've been looking pretty down lately. He claimed very serious. What makes you think that? I asked, getting prepared to change the subject as soon as I could. Sometimes I talked out every single one of my worries with him, but only when I was about to cry. I had an anxiety problem, and to those who never had the misfortune of suffering of that, it's pretty hard to maintain your self-esteem where you're constantly anxious. Anxious about the next day, about what people think of you, about the choices you have to do once in your life, you know. I'm asking because you look sad and sort of scared all the time. Is something bothering you? I didn't want to tell him, not to him of all people. I trusted him, but I never imagined him as a psychologist. He was indeed a shoulder to cry on when I was down, but... I won't tell anyone, girl. You can be sure of that. He said, sensing my nerves. I took a deep breath and looked him in the eyes. It's always the same thing every day, I grunted. He kept glancing at me with inquiring eyes. I feel like my life is always the same. Nothing happens and every day I feel trapped by the routine I have. Suddenly, we both looked at the television in the corner. It was a breaking news story. Just in, today in Shibuya, Tokyo, Naoki Tofuji, age 35, was arrested as a suspect of the death of, the, of a roommate, a woman age 25. We both looked away. I sighed. 
Even criminality was as uncontrolled as always. I wondered, why had I been born in a world where injustice and inhumanity were constant? If we were born to be happy, why are all these people who live without even trying to happiness? Come to think of it, what is true happiness? I'm afraid I can't help you much with that. Told me light was a face as heavy as mine. Because I'm dealing with the same problem as you. He what? How could somebody as bright as him have such a problem? But, but like Kuhn, I said surprised. You are so very popular unlike me. How do you have to deal with a problem like mine? I don't consider everybody I talk to as my friend. He replied a bit annoyed. You, for example, aren't as dumb as other girls back in school. You're not as boring as most of them. I blushed slightly. Not as boring as the other girls. I was glad I didn't have the dumb reputation. At least not to him I hadn't. You're right. I left. I don't hang out much with the girls in school because most of them are snobbish. Besides, my best friends are outside of school anyways. He smiled at me and stuck a spoon of sundae in my mouth all of a sudden. I swallowed in surprise, then I looked at him like I was saying, Why did you do that? Although you, knew, you do need to be a little sweeter. He said, joking. I looked annoyed at him. What exactly do you mean by that, mister? I said a little loud. He just laughed in response. And once again, we were both walking on the streets. Someday... He said, breaking the silence with which had installed between us. Things will change when I get to the CP ICPO. I will make justice be more severe for those who deserve that. You dream of making this world a better place, then? I said, looking at him curious. Don't you want to live on such a world? He asked, looking for my support on that matter. I wish I could. I said, remembering some stuff for moments. A better world is a utopia. That's the truth. A childish fantasy. That's what it is. Well, here you are, safe and sound, said Light when we arrived at my apartment. Alive and in one piece, I replied heading for the door. I'll see you tomorrow then, Seiro-chan, he said walking away and waving goodbye. Bye, Light Kun, I replied waving back. I went up the stairs and opened the door with my own keys father wasn't home yet. I threw my skull back to the sofa of the living room, took my shoes off and walked to my room. I sat in my bed and lay down. At that moment, alone in my sanctuary, I felt I could release myself of the emotions that crushed me. I began crying. Don't ask, but these crises came to me most times from nowhere. Everything was making me sick. Nothing new was entering my life. It seemed the world had thrown me to the garbage can without caring for me. I cried myself to sleep and eventually forgot the matter for moments. My life was definitely empty and with no meaning. Little did I knew that a miracle was to fall from the sky to my hands soon enough. <laughs>